Ah, so you want to get high quality, crisp, clean 3D prints with a resin printer. You want to be able to print your own games, awesome models and dioramas, and to make the process easy, mess free, and with as little print failures as possible? You've come to the right place. This is Blitz Gaming. I'm Tyler, and I'm going to show you my 3D printing workflow, which has come from trial and error, research, and tips and tricks I've learned over years of 3D printing. Now, I actually just got a second resin printer, the Anycubic Photon Mono 4K, in all its sleek, slender beauty. You'll see footage of me using both that printer and the 2K version. Okay, so it all starts with slicing your files. Well, really, it starts with making sure the printer's in working order and the build plate's level, but that stuff's pretty easy to do. <laughs> so here I'm using a, a software called Leechee, L-Y-C-H-E-E. -E. And the files you're seeing here are from the Brave Sun Starship Miniatures campaign that we recently launched on Kickstarter. I'm gonna be honest with you. Your best bet if you're starting out is to get premium models that are pre-supported like these ones. Free models tend to have more issues and errors in their meshes. So sometimes you'll end up with uncured resin inside the model that can cause it to burst later on. And a lot of them have bad supports. I usually support my models at a 45 degree angle. That tends to be the optimal angle for both stability of the print and higher quality. Supporting and slicing can be kind of complicated, which is why starting out, I recommend getting yourself some pre-supported models like these ones. But I have come up with a system for supporting and slicing that leads to prints that succeed on the first test print almost every time. The next video I'll do will be all about supporting and slicing your models. I'll go through all of that and how I get great prints every time. So if you wanna be notified when that video arrives, Hit the subscribe button and click the bell. All right, so we've got our sliced file, which in this case is a .pwmo. We've plugged in the USB. If the printer has sat for more than a few hours, I always check the FEP, which is the plastic at the bottom of the vat. I scrape all this residual resin off the bottom. I think it's partly cured resin as well as heavier parts of the resin mixture sinking down to the bottom. So you just lightly scrape until the FEP is clean and the resin is mixed. Make sure you're using the plastic tool. Never use a metal scraper on the FEP. You do not want to scratch the FEP. You want to avoid scratching it as much as possible. So I wipe it down with a paper towel. I put some alcohol on, on the tool and then I wipe it on that microfiber cloth and then I'm curing the, uh, the resin that's on that paper towel. I use microfiber cloth for a lot of stuff. You'll see more throughout the video. Always cure materials like gloves and paper towel that get resin on them. Never dispose of any uncured resin in the drain or in the trash, including water wash resin. That is a big no-no. I usually sit and listen to the first few layers looking for that pop. Yeah, right there, you can actually see it. That pop sound means that it's working. Now, here's why my method differs from most other people you're gonna want to get yourself more than one alcohol bath. Doesn't have to be this, these same buckets, but I like them because they're the right size and they're tall enough for tall prints. Whenever you handle any resin, make sure you're wearing gloves and a mask. Okay, our print's done. You're gonna see me try to work the camera and do my cleaning process all with one hand, so wish me luck. <laughs> so, man, the print looks great, first of all. Now, I'm gonna start by letting the extra resin drip off of the corner of the build plate. Every drop that drips back into the vat is a drop that doesn't dirty your alcohol. So it kind of keeps your alcohol cleaner for longer. Um, so it's just kind of a matter of patience, uh, but th this step is not like, you don't have to sit here and wait for 20 minutes while all the resin drops. So now I'm going to go ahead and give the build plate with the print on it, a nice dunk in the first bath. I call this the dirty bath. Look how dirty it is. It is very, very dirty. <laughs> Now I bought this container a while ago. Uh, this container is good for small prints, but I don't really recommend containers like this because whenever I print something big, I can't dunk the whole thing in the alcohol. Uh, that's why I recommend the official tubs from Anycubic. Now, after I've dipped it a few times and gotten most of the resin off, this, this gets off 90 to 95% of the resin. I'm just going to let it drip a bit so that I don't uh, dirty up the next bath too much. Here we go, we're gonna dunk it in here now because the print was so wide, I didn't notice at first it didn't go down all the way. <laughs> I'll fix that in just a second. But this bath, I call the medium bath. I've got just enough alcohol in there that even the top of the build plate gets cleaned. You could of course use the wash and cure machine and have it spin up and clean your print for you. I just find it's not a big deal to do it manually and it doesn't take a lot of time. There we go, I've fixed it and I just, I keep the basket in there just, you know, for convenience, just makes it a little easier, I guess. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and let it drip a little bit and then di dip it in the clean bath, which is the final and third bath. Okay, now it's time for the last bath and look at how clean this alcohol is. Yes, there's a film of cured resin at the bottom, but you can see down to the bottom. <laughs> 
that's that's important um even though this alcohol has been used for like 50 plus prints in the last couple months that means that when we take our models out when they dry they'll be clean they won't have hardly any residual uncured resin and they won't be sticky sometimes even curing your models for a lot of extra time in the uh the curing machine still doesn't stop them from being sticky but this process of doing the three baths the dirty bath the medium bath the clean bath it works beautifully it works so beautifully every time you don't want to over cure your models anyway because it makes them brittle so if you've got sticky models and you're just curing, curing the heck out of them that can actually cause other problems too sometimes i brush the alcohol around to spread it and help it evaporate be careful doing this this is not necessary it could damage your print if it's under cured now we're going to wait for the print to dry which can take like 20 to 30 minutes meanwhile it's time to close everything up place the baths in the windowsill so the resin can cure a bit between each print this just keeps the alcohol a little cleaner than it would be otherwise I literally change my alcohol only once or twice a year now. And when I do, I only have to change out the dirty bath. The medium bath and the clean bath cycle down. They become the dirty bath and the medium bath. And I pour myself a new clean bath with 91% or higher isopropyl alcohol. Now I've got three baths again. Now the models are dry. So I'm gonna pop them off with what? A butter knife. <laughs> yeah, I found recently it actually works a lot better. At least when the print has the angled support base from lychee slicer because I can just put some upward force at the base of the print and the print pops off without scratching the build plate. It was only a little bit difficult here because the models were so close that the bases were actually overlapping. Now I'm gonna carefully take the supports off little by little so I don't damage any fragile parts of the model. You could use flush cutters, but I find it's only necessary when you need to be accurate and not break off thin parts. And there's our model, it looks gorgeous. <laughs> I accidentally printed the the version without a rod hole. <laughs> but luckily we have some rod hole adapters that we released as part of the campaign. So I'll glue those on in just a little bit. Same thing here with the base. I'm just gonna carefully pop it off. Look at how clean and smooth that model is. This is not even the 4K printer. This print specifically was from that printer you see right there. And that's the 2K uh, version. And these are the kind of results you can expect. Okay, now I'm just gonna get the residual supports off with a toothbrush and we're going to finish the curing process. Usually you don't fully cure the model as you print. So while they're curing, I'm just gonna clean the build plate just to make sure there's no residual resin. Now, I don't recommend doing this with a paper towel, actually. I'm doing a paper towel here, but I found recently it's better to use a microfiber cloth so the particles from the paper towel don't get into your resin, which creates holes, sometimes big ones in your 3D print because the, the paper towel particles are just gonna be on the build plate and then the build plate just goes into the resin. It's a problem and the models are done. Let's glue on some adapters. These adapters are gonna let me use the twist lock mounting system, which was designed for the Brave Sun campaign. You just twist the models on and they're secure and ready to go. You've got two new models ready for the Brave Sun combat system. If you wanna learn more about supporting and slicing your models so you get great prints the first time around, then click the subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified when that video arrives. You're gonna learn some great tips and tricks to speed up the process get higher quality prints, and even save money while 3D printing. I highly recommend the Anycubic Photon Mono or Mono 4K as a starting printer. They're affordable, they're easy to use, they have little maintenance, and you still get great, great quality. There's links in the description for these printers and some of the tools that I recommend, like the disposable microfiber cloths, which I actually use multiple times before I throw each of them away, and some other helpful tools. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for growing our channel like a thousand percent from the last video. What the heck, you guys? <laughs> I guess you want more videos on 3D printing. All right, fine. Let's do it. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.